This video is sponsored by Established Titles. Become a Lord or Lady today. The Jeffrey Dahmer series, Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer Story, has proven to be, like most true crime, quite popular on Netflix. Apparently, it even beat the viewership record of Netflix's other massive hit, Squid Game. So, knowing us, you already know what we had to do. What if instead of targeting people in need, Ilnam committed to the Jigsaw Act and took some of history's greatest monsters and put them through the Squid Game? So today, Dahmer is going up against 23 other historical evil monsters to see who ends up the winner. I'm Kyle with Wicked Binge, and we want to know, would Jeffrey Dahmer win the Squid Games? Now, before we get to our contestants for today, let me first preface by saying these are all terrible, terrible people who did terrible, terrible things. And that's why we're putting them in the Squid Game, because they deserve it. So, today's contestants are Jeffrey Dahmer, Ted Bundy, John Wayne Gacy, the killer clown, Charles Manson, the cult leader, Ed Kemper, the co-ed killer, the Zodiac killer, Eileen Warnos, Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, Jack the Ripper, Dennis Rader, the BTK killer, Jim Jones, Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, Benito Mussolini, Heinrich Himmler, Kim Jong-un, Saddam Hussein, Chairman Mao, Vlad the Impaler, Ivan the Terrible, Idi Amin, Julius Caesar, Genghis Khan, Ed Gein the Plainfield Butcher, and H. H. Holmes. The first game we'll be talking about is the iconic stop and go game known as Red Light Green Light. What you need here is a level head and good listening skills. One must remember most of these players would likely be desensitized enough to blood and gore not to panic. This is especially true for Dahmer, who is well known for his calm and collected nature. But the first to go in this game is none other than Hitler. We'll make this brief because Hitler would be a massive threat if he gets far into the game. However, we find that highly unlikely. He was the fascist leader of one of the most evil and monstrous organizations that sparked World War II, committing atrocities on a massive scale and spewing hatred and vitriol at the core of his ideology. But here's the thing, Hitler had an issue with authority and those in power, if they weren't him of course, and he'd likely be the first one to defy the rules or instructions, earning him the first death. The next to fall in this game is Eileen Warnos. She was a killer and a lady of the night in Florida during the late 80s, who murdered multiple clients of hers during her spree. While on trial, it was found that she scored above the threshold to be referred to as a psychopath, and her actions were notoriously reckless and impulsive, which would not help her in this game. Similarly, Kim Jong-un is the next to go. Kim Jong-un is the dictator of North Korea, and we could go into his psychology here, but really, it's completely irrelevant. You're a joke. Just imagine this guy playing any game that requires agility. He's definitely gonna lose. The final monster to fall in this game is Ivan the Terrible. Ivan was the first czar of all of Russia and the first in a long line of leadership of that territory. He believed himself to be sent by God, and he is by far one of the least level-headed people on our list. He was seen as pretty much insane. The next game is the Honeycomb Challenge. But first, today's video is sponsored by Established Titles, and I gotta say, this is a really cool project I'm excited to talk about. Established Titles is a project based on the old Scottish custom of landowners being referred to as lords and ladies. What they do is sell very small plots of land, sometimes just one square foot, in Edelston, Scotland, and in exchange for buying one of these plots, you get a certification proclaiming your lordship or ladyship. Check it out. I got this cool plaque. It says Lord Kyle on it. It's got the official crest, and it even has the plot number that I own. Apparently, you can even change your name to Lord or Lady and have it put on your credit card, your plane ticket, or your dating profile. And I will say, not only is this an awesome gift for a family member or a friend, but Established Titles is also a great environmental project. For every small plot of land that they sell, they plant a tree to help combat deforestation and preserve beautiful natural land landscapes around the world. They also work with other charity groups, One Tree Planted and Trees of the Future, to support global reforestation efforts. And again, this makes for a really cool gift that can be bought last minute. Whether it's for your dad, your grandfather, your drunk uncle who's watched Braveheart one too many times, you could even get the couple pack that comes with adjoining plots of land. I love my plaque, I think it's a great conversation piece, and Established Titles environmental work is a great thing to support, so it's a win-win. Established Titles is running a massive fall sale right now. If you 
use code WICKEDBINGE, you'll get an additional 10% off. So go to EstablishedTitles.com forward slash WICKEDBINGE to get your gifts now and help support the channel. Established Titles also told me that the first 200 people to sign up using my link will have their plots of land placed within walking distance of mine. So depending on how many people want to be lords or ladies, we can start our own little Wicked Binge kingdom. The next game is the Honeycomb Challenge which requires a steady hand, dexterity, and a lot of patience. While a lot of these monsters have patience and a steady hand, three really come to mind. Obviously, Dahmer was mostly a very patient individual who would easily survive this challenge, and his experiments did require a certain level of dexterity. Oh, can I try mine? John Wayne Gacy is another monster who would survive this game because near the end of his life, he made many paintings. The other one we'll make note of is Ted Kaczynski, who was patient and steady-handed enough to make his own bombs. And not just a couple, but a lot of them. The first to go during this game is Dennis Rader. Raider is known as the BTK killer, and he was not the most patient man, sometimes relying more on improvised weapons and situations than deep planning. Maybe a surprise, up next to go is Joseph Stalin. Stalin was the communist leader of the Soviet Union. He barely survived the previous game because whilst he hated authority and wasn't the most level-headed man in the world, he knew what he had to do to survive. That said, Stalin's left hand and arm were extremely withered due to what we assume to be a carriage incident. This caused a lot of problems for him and would make it highly unlikely that he would pass this game. The final monster to be eliminated here is Chinese dictator Mao. Mao led China from the late 40s to the 70s, where he started what was essentially a cult of personality. However, Mao was impatient and that really stops him from going much further in this game. Which brings us to our next game, The Midnight Brawl. There are three major ways to survive this game, those being the ability to fight and defend oneself, being able to hide from others, and being able to use intelligence to befriend or outsmart your opponents. Of course, Dahmer was known to be very evasive, able to hide for nearly 15 years while committing his crimes. Similarly, the Zodiac Killer and Jack the Ripper were intelligent enough to be highly evasive, never being found after their crimes. The first to go during this game is Ted Kaczynski. Now, yes, Kaczynski, better known as the Unabomber, was able to make his own bombs thanks to having an IQ some say was in the 150s. There's one major issue. Kaczynski was a major weirdo and social outlier. I, I wouldn't call that anything out of the ordinary. There is no way in hell he would have any allies at this point in the games, and would almost definitely be beaten to death. We also have to say goodbye to the Emperor Julius Caesar. While Caesar was highly intelligent, we don't think that would help him all too much here. Caesar is well known because of the betrayal and assassination he went through, which goes to show that he is unable to protect himself easily and will likely have made a lot of enemies by this point. From dictator to cult leader, Charles Manson dies next. Manson was the leader of a cult in the late 60s, and while this shows leadership and manipulation skills, Manson was also not a fighter, and he wasn't so great at hiding either, as he made his presence very well known. It's my fault that your children do what they do? The final to fall during this game is Ed Gein. Gein was a killer in Wisconsin. He killed for a decade in the late 40s and 50s, and while he was well known, he doesn't really have the skills to survive this game, and he doesn't seem to be a combatant of any kind. Showing off their strength or their teamwork skills, the tug of war game is up next. This is a hard game for this list of killers, not because it requires strength, but because it requires teamwork skills as well. Dahmer may not have been famously strong or one to work in a team, but he was smart enough to know that teamwork would help him survive. The first to go during this game is Ted Bundy. Bundy was a well-known manipulator and killer. However, he seemed adverse to working with others and had a temper. And on top of this, he wasn't particularly the strongest individual left on our list. Similarly, the next to go is the Zodiac Killer. The Zodiac Killer was a man who was never caught, and people are still looking for him today. This is the Zodiac speaking. However, this secrecy makes it hard for us to say he would work well in any sort of team. We also believe Jack the Ripper would fall here too. Jack the Ripper was a notorious killer in Victorian London. Like the Zodiac Killer, he was never found and people still theorize on who he was to this day. Much like the Zodiac Killer, his secretive ways would likely make him unlikely to work well in a team. Next to go is Saddam Hussein. Saddam was the leader of Iraq up until his death in 2006. He was made fun of most famously on South Park, where they take his quirks and bring them up to 11. I have to go to Earth! 
Saddam doesn't like others in power, and would be very difficult to work with. He's also not that strong, and the final to fall in this game is H. H. Holmes. Holmes was one of America's first serial killers in the late 1800s, where he was known for creating the first jigsaw-esque murder house. Holmes is not a strong man, in fact he was quite overweight, even for his time, and that makes it unlikely his strength would play a factor in winning. He was also known to murder his business partners, which shows he's not very good at playing on a team, which also seals his fate. Whether you're manipulating another or just skilled at avoiding manipulation yourself, the marble game definitely takes some wit. Being able to manipulate your opponent into losing their marbles is exactly what you need to survive. Dahmer is actually a shoe in to survive here. His manipulation skills and premeditation to his crimes shows that he was more than capable of coming out on top in a game of wits. Also, Ed Kemper would have the greatest odds of winning. After he was caught in real life, he was IQ tested and scored in the 140s. The first to die is Idi Amin. Amin was the president of Uganda in the 70s, where he cemented himself as one of the worst dictators in recent history. These are lies! He may be a strong and confident leader, but as far as one could see, he's not particularly one for manipulation, and he's also very impulsive. The other character that would definitely fall in this game is Genghis Khan. Khan was a warrior through and through, and excelled in taking territory and keeping it. However, he didn't seem like the type to manipulate those around him personally. At best, he could muscle his way through the game, but any use of violence in this game is an immediate breach of rules, and his intelligence just doesn't stack up with the others. The penultimate game, The Glass Stepping Stones, is up next. The Glass Stepping Stones really comes down to luck more than anything, but factors such as the order in which players go, to how likely they are to move out of order, to their own pride or impulsiveness when picking their number are also a factor. The first to fall would be John Wayne Gacy. Gacy, better known as the Killer Clown, falls in this game for a lot of reasons, but the biggest ones are his lack of scare factor and his ego. Outside of his clown outfit, he wasn't very scary and was honestly someone that anyone else on this list could push around. I need to turn on a light. Gotta surprise him. Gacy wouldn't be able to get another person to switch with him if he wanted, and he also seemed to have an ego, to the point where we think he'd want to go first when picking a number. The next one to fall is none other than Italian fascist dictator Benito Mussolini. He was a brutal leader who led with an iron fist, and that is the main reason he falls here. His ego and general hatred makes it hard to think he'd pick any number other than number one. SS leader and monster Heinrich Himmler definitely dies here as well. Himmler was Hitler's top guy and behind some of the worst inhumane events in history. He fails here partly because he's cowardly. He ended up trying to hide from the Allies when the war ended, and it's likely that this would carry over into the games. He'd likely pick a number in the middle, and being known as such a frail and physically intimidating man, there's no way he's forcing someone else ahead of him. Ed Kemper would also die here as well. Kemper was a serial killer in the Santa Cruz area of California who was caught in a series of multiple murders. Originally, members of his own family, although he's much more known for his second spree. Having an IQ of 140, we think he'd pick a number in the middle, which would allow him to watch others go first, but not wait long enough for the clock to run out. But that said, a middle number is still a death sentence. That's a good phrase, no? Now, being six foot nine, he could easily force others to go ahead of him, but we think he would actually accept his fate, because the only reason they caught this guy in real life was because he walked into a police station by his own choice to turn himself in, and afterwards he requested the death penalty. The final one to fall sometime in the penultimate game is Jim Jones. Jim Jones was one of the most famous cult leaders of all time, leading the Jonestown cult. He was a master manipulator and quite smart. However, he was also egotistical, seeing himself as the voice of God. This guy's BS would have likely annoyed everyone else in the game by this point, and someone is definitely launching this guy through some glass just to shut him up. Which brings us to our final game and a brutal showdown in the titular Squid Game. Our final contestants are Jeffrey Dahmer and Vlad the Impaler. The final game is the Korean childhood squid game, with the twist being that each player has a knife. Jeffrey Dahmer, despite the fact he's our titular focus character of today's video, would definitely have a tough time against Vlad. The warlording, psychotic, crusading royalty that is Vlad Tepes III is much more of a threat than the skinny serial killer that is Jeffrey Dahmer, and frankly, he's far more terrifying as well. Vlad was well known for all sorts of torture, and most notably, impaling the corpses of about 20,000 Ottoman soldiers and using them to build a wall around his kingdom. Vlad loved torture of all kinds, and there's no way he didn't know his way around a blade. 
So Vlad the Impaler is the winner of the real life monster Squid Game. So congratulations? Let us know in the comments section what you think. Which of these psychos do you think would have won the Squid Game? Make sure to hit that notification bell and binge our Squid Game playlist. But most importantly, stay wicked.